Without a plan, revision can be stressful and lead to poor exam results. In this podcast, I guide students through one part of such a plan, study resources. First, we cover the theory for each topic, and then I suggest questions to practice acquired skills. Join me in making your exam experience a success story. A quick disclaimer, OpenAI's large-scale language generation tool ChatGPT has been used to draft some content in this episode. Study Square Limited has adapted the content and takes full responsibility for the publication. Now let's go through some theory about data. Discrete data consists of distinct, separate values, while continuous data can have any value within a specific range. Primary data is collected directly from sources, while secondary data has already been collected and used for a different purpose. Grouped data is organized into categories, while ungrouped data is not. A frequency table is a chart that shows the number of times every value is in the data set. A cumulative frequency diagram shows the total values equal to or less than a value in a data set. A graph that bars to represent different values or categories is called a bar chart. A pie chart is a graph in the shape of a circle. Each part of it represents the size of the corresponding part of the data. A pictogram is a chart with pictures or symbols representing different values or categories. A line graph has the points connected by lines to show the continuity of the data. A histogram is like a bar chart, but the bars are adjacent and there are no spaces between them. A box plot is a graph displaying the distribution of the data set. It consists of a box representing the middle 50% of the data, with a line inside the rectangle representing the median value. Okay, so let's have a look at a question from this topic. Name the type of diagram provided in the image. If you want to see the answer and the solution for this question, use the link in the show notes of this episode. Do you know anyone who could benefit from listening to this episode? Share it with them. That's how we can support more students in preparing for their exams. Also, if you like listening to this podcast, it would be awesome if you left a 5-star rating or a review. Okay, so let's have a look at averages. Averages are measures of the central tendency of a set of data. The mean is found by adding all values and dividing the result by their total number. It is also known as arithmetic average. The median is the center of a set of ordered values. For an odd number of values, the median is the middle value. Alternatively, the median is the mean of the two middle values for an even number of values. The moat is the most frequently occurring value in a set of data. A data set can have one mode, more than one, or no mode. The modal class is a range of values that contains the moat. The range is calculated by subtracting the smallest from the largest value in the data set, and it measures the spread of data. Okay, so let's have a look at a question from this topic. 20 volunteers have been cleaning a beach. Each of them has collected the following amount of rubbish in kilograms. 7, 4, 3, 2, 5, 2, 7, 5, 4, 3, 6, 5, 5, 4, 7, 3, 8, 4, 6, 5. Find the modal mass of rubbish collected by a volunteer. If you're unsure about how to solve this problem, you can visit the page of this topic, which is in the show notes. Many students revise for exams without a plan. This can result in sporadic learning, poor exam results, and worse career opportunities. However, you can avoid that. Generate your personal exam revision plan on studysquare.co.uk forward slash plan. So let's learn more about quartiles. Quartiles are measures of the distribution of a data set that divide the data into four equal parts or quarters. The first quartile, denoted as Q1, is the value that separates the lowest 25% of the data from the rest. The second quartile, Q2, divides the lowest 50% of the data from the highest 50% and is known as the median. Finally, the third quartile, denoted as Q3, is the value that separates the lowest 75% of the data from the highest 25%. The interquartile range measures the spread of the data set. We can calculate it by subtracting the first from the third quartile. IQR measures how far apart the middle of the dataset is from the rest of the dataset. 
Knowing a dataset's quartiles and interquartile range can give us a good idea of its overall shape and spread. In addition, it can help identify outliers or other unusual observations in the data. So let's see an example of a problem for this theory. Find the third quartile for 8, 3, 6, 4, 7, 3, 2, 8, 5, 9, 4, 9, 2, 1, 7, 4, 9, 4. There's a link in the show notes of this episode in case you want to double check the answer for this question. Did you know that we have other podcasts for maths and science? If you're interested to learn more, search for Revision with Jonas on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Okay, so let's have a look at line of best fit. A line of best fit can predict the relationship between two variables. On paper, we draw the line so that the distances between itself and the data points are as small as possible. Interpolation estimates a value between two known values. We can use extrapolation to predict a value outside the available range. Outliers are data that significantly differ from the rest. To ignore outliers, they should be identified and removed from the data set before drawing the line of best fit. Okay, so let's have a look at a question from this topic. Marcus has surveyed a few of his classmates. He first asked each of them how many times per week they exercised. Then he measured their VO2 max, which is cardiovascular health measurement. The summarized data are 337, 028, 754, 620, and 442. Which point of the ones provided is an outlier? If you're unsure about how to solve this problem, you can visit the page of this topic, which is in the show notes. Okay, so let's have a look at correlation. Correlation measures the relationship between two variables. We observe positive correlation when both variables increase at the same time. When one variable increases but the other decreases, that's a negative correlation. We can measure the strength of the correlation by the correlation coefficient, which ranges from minus 1 to 1. A correlation coefficient of minus 1 or 1 indicates a strong correlation, while a coefficient of 0 indicates no correlation. Variables with a positive or negative correlation do not necessarily cause the other. There might be a third variable in the relationship, or it could be a coincidence. Now let's mention a question that could be asked in this topic. Name the type of correlation in the graph provided. If you want to see the answer and the solution for this question, use the link in the show notes of this episode. Now that we have covered the theory, it is time to practice solving related problems. So head to studysquare.co.uk forward slash resources and try answering questions on this topic. I hope you have a great week ahead and until next time.